We are back in the garage with the Z again today because there are a number of projects that we got to take on. Finally, they've been on the list for a long time. Finally getting an opportunity <sighs> to take a couple of them on. We have the front upper adjustable control arms from Z1 Motorsports. We have the poly motor mounts from Z1 Motorsports. And we also have the plenum spacer from Z1 Motorsports. Big shout out to Z1 Motorsports for the hookup and the support for this 350Z project. Looking forward to getting these done. Also have new tie rods. I don't know if I want to take those on right now, but we have them to change them. And if we get a little time to do it, we might include them. In this video, we're going to be installing what some people consider one of the best upgrades, best modifications for the 350Z DE, and that is the plenum spacer from Z1 Motorsports. Apparently, it gives you a nice little kick, a nice little bit of additional throttle response. So looking forward to installing this one finally. And while we're at it, we're going to paint the, uh, the manifold itself and just uh, help clean up the engine bay a little bit. So let's get it. done is just gone around and snap them all loose now I'm going to actually remove them and place them on the board I've actually cut little openings in all the spots so we have them all in the right place so we don't lose them but you want to loosen them or crack them loose in the order that is given in the instructions just so pressure is released and then you want to tighten them down in the correct order as well so we'll just start pulling them out There we go. These are all 10 millimeter, by the way. So you can see we have them all put in their places. Number 12 and 17 are nuts. So just have it off here uh, in an area that we shouldn't mess with. We shouldn't kick it or run into it. So those should all stay perfectly in place now. We just have to Disconnect this plug, disconnect this little tube here, uh, disconnect this tube. There may be something underneath the throttle body. We're not going to remove the throttle body, but just be very careful. Just try not to touch the butterfly inside of there. Don't mess with it. Don't bounce it around. Don't just, just don't disturb it. We don't have to worry about doing a throttle relearn and any of that crap. So we're just going to be really careful. side under there just gonna get in the tight spot to lower the clamp Jeez, hurry. another freaking
doesn't look too bad under here. Just gonna make sure this metal gasket gets down nice and flat. And one thing a lot of people mess up with or have troubles with is this little rubber gasket seal thing around the uh, oil filler neck gets stuck in there. They actually seal it up in between the two layers and then they have a leak. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eliminate that a chance right now by taking this off. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and get that cleaned up and painted. Not sure what color I'm gonna paint it yet. We'll see what kind of paint we got left. Um, now looking at the spacer itself, you can see there's a bit of a taper. The thicker side tapers toward the back. So the thicker side goes toward the front of the car. So this is the thick side. I'm just gonna get it set in place here. Well, I thought about sanding it all down, making it smooth before I painted it, but I just said heck with it. I kind of like the textured look, uh, and I don't want to do the wrinkle black because it just doesn't turn out right with the spray can. So I'm set up here in my really nice paint booth. Uh, it's been treated with brake cleaner, then mineral spirits, and then we wiped it down with a tack cloth to try to get all the residue off of this stuff because this cast stuff can be a little bit dusty, so we did our best. Now uh, we're going to hit it with a few coats of black. This is just a light dusting to make sure it gets good adhesion and we'll go over it with a couple more heavier coats. First light coat is down. I'll let it sit for about five or six minutes. It's pretty warm outside with a little bit of breeze so it's gonna dry and tack up pretty good. This is two coats, actually it looks really good. Let it cure up just for another few minutes or so. Put, spray a third coat on it. Uh, one problem typically with rattle can paint is that it, there's just not enough pressure in the can to help it lay down nice. It's not so bad here with this textured thing. You can't really see the imperfections in the paint, but a trick for painting nice smooth surfaces with the gloss black in particular, leave the can in the sun a little bit let it warm up, it builds pressure in the can, or you can use like a hot uh, pot of water and just set it in there and uh, let the pressure build inside the can. It sprays out a little bit harder, helps that paint lay down a little, a little smoother, a little cleaner. Just a little tip for you. Not too hot, obviously. You don't want the, don't want the can to explode. While that's drying a little bit, I just am in here cleaning up these runners a little bit, cleaning up this uh, portion of the manifold. A little bit of oil, oily residue in there from blow by and whatnot. Uh, not too bad, surprisingly clean. Um, so I guess the purpose for this spacer is, you know, the intake comes in in the back in the back side of this. Uh, so these front runners don't get as much air as the back runners for obvious reasons. That's the theory anyway. So helping, helping more evenly distribute the air intake, the intake air into the engine, uh, getting it more to these front runners should help kind of maximize the performance of this engine. So we're going to test her out. I'm going to put the new gasket. You retain the old gasket. Uh, between the uh, lower portion of the plenum and the new spacer and then we'll put the new gasket on top of here let me grab that I had a 
tiny, tiny bit of gold left, so I snuck a little accent there on the throttle body. I think it looks nice. Matches the calipers. So keep things consistent. The red, black, and gold. That's the color combination for this 350Z. Let that dry a little bit longer. I'll put her on. I also got this driver's side piece, PCV hose. I actually accidentally got the wrong one because it ends up being hidden back in here, but it replaces this guy here, which connects to the underside of your in, uh, your cold air intake or your intake. So I'm just gonna pull that off, transfer the clamps over to this one, get it ready for install. Thankfully, Z1 has all of the hardware organized nicely. Um, just looking at the instructions here, these longer bolts actually replace one, three, and six. And then I believe these longer bolts move forward to replace these. Uh, it, it's all made very clear in the instructions, so make sure you check those out. Uh, these washers with seals go in the center, as far as I know. Uh, these are used in various locations. Some bolts you reuse. Uh, hardware is included as well. So um, just look at the installation instructions on this, and uh, it's all pretty clear. Tighten it down to 44 to 61 inch pounds. Inch pounds, people, don't get that confused. It's much different than foot pounds. Um, but just for reference, um, you essentially can divide these numbers by 12 to get you foot pounds. Uh, so you're tightening down to like five, five and a half foot pounds of torque. But 44 to 61 inch pounds, inch pounds. And there it is. Gotta say, it looks pretty damn good. A little bit of a gold accent there. Maybe we'll put another speed culture decal on here somewhere just to kind of sneak one in. So we got one at every angle, but it's looking sharp. It's not so bad of an installation. Just gotta take your time a little bit. Make sure everything fits up there perfectly. Be careful pulling the uh, plenum, the upper part of the plenum off so you're not um, stretching any any hoses or busting any cables because there are a couple of plugs remember and some hoses connected on the back side and on the underside and on the underside of your intake so um, just be careful so we're gonna do a little bit of more engine bay cleanup I gotta fire this thing up and uh, take it down the road so that's kind of up here in just a couple of minutes uh, and then we have control arms motor mounts uh, and some other things to do to this car so I hope you guys will stick around uh, but let's let's get the car down get it on the road see if it runs That scared me. <laughs>